Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and I am so excited to get you my chat that I had with Matt Rushworth. He is right now currently working at Adamson Barbecue in Toronto, Canada, and we get into that and how he got the job and his upbringing and his schooling and what his path was and how it switched to barbecue and how he was with Adamson as they grew and grew and continued evolving. And he's with them now, but he's going to branch off. He's going to have Betty Boy Barbecue Catering. It's going to be in Kingston, Ontario, which is about three and a half hours, four hours away from Toronto. It's where he grew up. He's going to be doing catering. Adam Skelly from Adamson Barbecue is giving him tons of guidance, and they're getting together every couple weeks. They, they work together, but they're getting together to kind of map out and to help him out. It's it's a great story. It's really interesting, and it's an interesting path. It's similar to a, a path that a lot of people have here in the United States, but it's from a Canadian perspective, and I think you'll find that extremely interesting. Also, Matt is just a stand-up guy, a great guy. He's forthright about everything. He's not pretentious. He gives the entire story in a way that makes you understand who he is as a person. So I, I appreciate the fact that he sat down. I know you would enjoy this. And if you're digging these, please subscribe. That way you don't miss out on anything. I do about two of these per week. If you're listening to this just on the podcast, I do have a YouTube version of all of these at youtube.com slash Kevin's BBQ Joints. I'm available on all the social media at Kevin's BBQ Joints. Also, I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com with all links to all the podcasts, all the YouTube stuff, all the barbecue joint visits, all the butcher shop visits, all the steakhouse visits. Got lots of cool stuff and original content. I have a weekly list of all the barbecue pop ups in and around Los Angeles, as well as a list of all the barbecue pop ups and underground spots in Texas. Every week it's updated so that way you could scout out some new barbecue places. But in the end, thanks so much for listening. I do appreciate it. Enjoy. Good morning, Matt. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you? I am doing well. I'm glad we got a chance to do this. There's a lot of stuff you have coming up, but I also wanted to kind of see and like share your path on how you got to where you are today. Did you grow up in Toronto? Uh, no, actually. I grew up in uh, Kingston, Ontario, which is about a two and a half, three hour drive away from Toronto. It's like a uh, I guess like, you'd say it's like kind of like uh, Canada's Boston, I guess. It's like oh, okay. a really old, old historic town, you know, old university town. That's really cool. Did you, at that time, like, were you planning on going into the food industry at all when you grew up? Did you guys cook? Is barbecue, It's people are always grilling everywhere. Is that something that you guys did as kids? Yeah, I think in, in Canada, it's a lot more uh, grilling than it is uh, smoking. And I think that's pretty pretty weather dependent. So you have barbecue to to Canadians and hammers and hot dogs, you know. It's just been within the last, you know, maybe 10, 15 years that uh, like a lot of people have started smoking stuff. Mm -hmm. At least on, you know, it's become like super popular in yeah. the industry. Was smoking fish part of your life? I, I've never asked anybody that from Canada. Is that something that you guys used to do? No, like that was, uh, that's more like a West Coast, you know, BC. Oh, it is? Thing. Okay. Bigger, bigger out there, yeah. But yeah, I cooked all growing up. Like my dad was, you know, kind of the, the house chef and he was super into it. And so, and like my mom and grandma were, were big into baking. So like, you know, I was, you know, a little toddler sitting on the, the, the counter, you know, mixing up <laughs> stuff. That's cool. So they did, they did spark your interest then. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Barbecue, God, I remember like my dad would do ribs. But I think the, the first time we did like a pork shoulder, I think it was after he went down to, uh, my grandparents had a place in Florida that they would uh, like winter in. Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, there were, one of their neighbors was an old Cuban guy and he made, uh, he smoked pork shoulders and oh. like made Cubanos. Oh, and like my dad came back from Florida because like, I, I think at that time I was, I was in school. Yeah. And he came back from a trip down there to visit and was just like, you gotta have this this pork shoulder thing. We gotta we gotta get a pork shoulder and like in grocery stores you couldn't find them. You know. So how did he do it? Did he find a butcher that had one, or did he even do it? Did he end up doing? It? Yeah, yeah. Like found a, like went to a butcher, <laughs> got his hands on like I think a picnic roast, and uh -huh. you know got that on like his gas grill sort of thing. So yeah, that was like the first time I think I was, uh, God, I was maybe like twelve or thirteen. Was it good? First, first exposure to it. I mean, my memory was that it was good. But... Uh, as long as it was good at, at that point, or at least yeah, as you're as you're remembering it. And it's it's interesting too. I think that's that's a good one to go into because it's a little more forgiving if it's 
cooked properly like if you if you paid attention to yeah yeah like uh we would do we do like st louis cut ribs you know like in the oven in the winter and that sort of thing like that, those were kind of like the you know with like lots of barbecue sauce uh in the summer yeah it'd be more uh Pork shoulders or racks of ribs. Did you go to college? Was it, okay, because, because when we, we were talking, you said that you have a master's degree. Did you go to school in that area? Yeah, so I went to Queen's University, which is the, the university in Kingston. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I was a townie, but I moved my like moved into to downtown in my uh, my third year. Okay, the first couple of years, I was with my parents. Yeah, what did you study? I studied philosophy, history, and. I guess all my other free courses I took like religious studies, which is kind of like history and philosophy rolled into one. Exactly. Did you want to be a professor? Is that? Yeah, I think at the beginning I knew I like I wanted to teach, um, whether that was uh, like high school or going to academics. So that was kind of like the, you know, coming out of high school. That's kind of the, the career path I thought it was going to take. So this is interesting because, and it's it's not unlike a lot of the interviews that I do, is that your path was not towards barbecue at all no i worked um i had friends that took a program in uh, photojournalism at one of the colleges that's uh, just it's close to kingston and i sort of caught the photography bug from them they would come home for you know on holidays or whatever i'd be like oh like, you know these cameras are cool like how do you use it thing and so I, I worked for the student newspaper at queen's and then I got kind of more, I got a job at the uh, the museum. We have a, our military college in Canada is in Kingston as well. Okay. Uh, so I got a job at the museum there because they were digitizing stuff. And he was like, ah, I need somebody who knows how digital cameras work and how you can, like file things. And I had worked in a, uh, the library there uh, before that. So then I was kind of like, well, maybe I'll kind of go into more uh, libraries or archives or museums. I had this experience in photography, and I found this program in Toronto uh, that is like museum studies, but it's it's uh, it's kind of more it's applicable whether you would work at an archive that had photographs or uh, a museum that has a photography department or like even a library or like community archive or anything like that. So it, it was like specifically photography and museums and libraries. And I was like, oh, this is like all of my yeah. kind of experience at that point. Uh, rolled into one so yeah that's that's what brought me to toronto was uh this like photography museum program trying to figure out how you made the connection with adam the did, did you get a part-time job is that what you're looking for a job or something or is that how, or is that fast forward a lot further well the the program was was two years i worked uh like uh the thing about the museum world is it's like uh, a lot of contracts so you do, you know, four month contracts, six month contracts, oh, that makes sense. contracts, and I did a few back to back. Like I worked part time during school and full time, like you know, all four months of the summer, all until uh, I think about a year and a half after I graduated grad school, um, that I was like employed continuously. I guess like my luck ran out, <laughs> and I was I was applying to just dozens and dozens and dozens of jobs uh, probably it probably got into the hundreds by a certain point i i that interviewed for yeah i interviewed for positions in the uk and canada oh man yeah it was, it was uh, like a year of being on like unemployment insurance and then like that ran out at the time uh that was about when my dad was diagnosed with uh cancer oh. and so it was like a, I don't know, like I got a, I got a part-time like minimum wage job, you know, working in a clothing store <laughs> just so that I could like, pay my rent and because my wife was working full-time and uh, yeah, so my dad was diagnosed. We got married the next year. What year, what year was this? That'd be 2015. Okay. And then, uh, so he passed away in April, 2016. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. That was, uh, that was like. You know, I spent uh, the last couple of weeks with him and then I came back to Toronto and it was kind of like a, like, what the hell am I doing? You know, mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I have spent at this point, like almost two years, not in the fields that I had like, you know, <laughs> spent all this time. <laughs> exactly. Invested a huge amount. And like, you know, that was like 
it was just kind of like throwing my hands up and being like, what else can I mm -hmm. even do? Uh, what, what is my degree applicable to other things? What could I do in that? Would I even enjoy it? Yeah. Um, uh, and it was just like, and with your you father, know, that whole, that your brain. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like, what else do I like? Cause like, even if I want this to work, it's not working. So I got to do something. So I was like, I like to cook. I've never liked the, like the kind of militant, uh, you know, French style kitchen, you know, with the, the chef and the sous chef and the yes chef, no chef. Kind it's of intimidating. Thing. Yeah. 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 So I was like, I don't know if I could do that. Yeah. It was, um, it was while I was back home that I was like scrolling on Instagram and found Adam's barbecue and like, I was kind of a big, like a barbecue nerd. You know, my friends would be like, oh, oh this uh, new barbecue place opened up near me. And like, I'd go and they'd be like, right, right. <laughs> oh, thanks, guy. It's like, neat. Great and they, they're all kind of like uh, barbecue in Toronto at that point was uh, really in Canada. It was, you know, kind of a generic southern, you know, very sauce heavy kind of uh, barbecue. Right. And I had gone down to Austin in 2012 oh. uh, to go to a, a conference in at the University of uh, was it University of Texas at Austin. Mm -hmm. They the Harry Ransom Center is there, which is like a big uh, big photography museum. Okay. Yeah, at, like if, so, uh, a couple of my friends that went to the the grad program. One was in New York City, one was in Pittsburgh, and I was in Toronto, and then we all flew down to Austin together, and we rented a house on Airbnb, which, you know, in those days was... Early days. In the early days of Austin being cool, so you get, like, an entire house for $100 a night. <laughs> <laughs> you split this house, and I was like, guys, we have to have barbecue while we're here. And they're like, oh, yeah, cool, definitely. I'm like, so we have to get up, and we have to go wait in line. You know, I, you know, I was talking about Frank, yeah, yeah, like, of you know... Go in line at like 7, 8 a.m. And they'll open at 11. And they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm not going to do that. And I'm like, come on, guys. And I think it was at that point, it was either that or uh, uh, at the time, it was John Miller Meat Market, I think, the original kind of trailer that he had. I was trying to convince them to go to one of those. And they were just like, well, like we'd have to miss like half the morning of the conference. That's really what we came here for. Um, so... Like I got us to a barbecue place, certainly not a, you know, Texas monthly top 50 or anything like that. But it was like my first taste of like Texas barbecue. Do you remember, you don't uh, remember which place it was? It was uh, Ruby's yeah, on Ruby's. just the university. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We went there and then afterwards we went to a hole in the wall and, and drank our faces off. So yeah, I remember uh, going there and I think at that point the dollar, our dollar was like near parity. So like. It, like everything seems so much cheaper to me and i remember a hole in the wall i saw a bottle of bookers which is like super strong bourbon and i was like oh you guys have bookers like that's you know can i get one of those and like the, the bartender was like oh uh, i'm not sure how much that is just let me check the system he came back and it was like just so you know it's gonna be like six dollars right and i'm like make it a double like i'm used to paying <laughs> Double that for a single in Canada, you know. Oh, that's so, so funny. I like drank that all night. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Do you think that was where you got the bug then? Like, did you realize like something's different about this barbecue? Yeah, yeah, that was definitely like the whole culture of it. The you know having like a having brisket for the first time. Like it was, I remember it was a really super smoky brisket, and like having it with the white bread and and the pickles and the onions like on the tray like it was my first kind of exposure to that there's something about that the first time i had it too i was like this is it's so foreign and so unusual but yeah. so perfect and you're like why didn't this exist in my hometown yeah exactly and uh we i remember we stuffed ourselves so much that we were walking down uh to guadalupe is that the the street and we were all so full like we would like walk 20 steps and then just stop <laughs> <sighs> like, that's a good feeling like, you know, <laughs> what is it that. That makes you eat that much like i don't know <laughs> yeah it makes you, it makes you feel like an animal you're like it was, am i an animal like i i have self-control but i can't control myself so yeah that was uh so yeah i, I guess i got kind of off track but that was that was my first experience no that makes it. sense and, and then you were following then when when you came back you maybe were when your friends were bringing you to barbecue places you were judging them kind of against that experience right yeah exactly and uh 
Yeah, and so I think it was 2015 I smoked my first brisket, you know, watching Franklin videos. I remember the first time I heard about Texas barbecue was actually um, Robert Rodriguez on the uh, the special features of, what was it, the, oh, the Grindhouse movie? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, he he did the one for Once Upon a Time in Mexico with the uh, Porco Pibil, and I, I made that a whole bunch. And then when that movie came out and he did the Texas barbecue, it was like, brisket and these gigantic beef ribs and uh, you know an offset smoker and like you know you know a, a loaf of white bread and and like that was the i think that was the first time that i ever heard about texas barbecue and so that's it that's interesting you're the first person who's ever said that yeah and so yeah it was that and the, the franklin videos oh, like the peep series and i was like i i had to go i went to like four or five different places looking for a whole brisket in toronto and at luck. that point go down to like like uh st lawrence market which is like kind of a big uh farmer's market uh and there's there's like a beef supplier there like that, that breaks down the whole animals sort of thing and that was the first place that had packer you know packer cut whole briskets right and so yeah i got one from there and they uh, they, they let me pick it out. They brought out every brisket they had, which was, I think, eight briskets. And I went through every one to get, like, the fat coverage and you know, everything that, you know, Aaron said in the video. Like, uh, And, yeah, that was that was my first one. I had this, like, little – it was, like, a gas grill, but you could, like, mount a little firebox on the side. Interesting. And it was, like, lump, lump charcoal and, like, little chunks of oak that I would put on. And literally, you would if you moved – you know, to, to raise the temperature like 10 degrees, you could just move the like charcoal pile oh, like closer. a couple inches forward <laughs> and back. And that's how I controlled the temperature with that little pile. And I, yeah, I did it on my birthday. I got up at six in the morning and it was on by 7 a.m. and seven or 8 a.m. And yeah, it was 12 hours of just, you know, poking that tiny little fire and going the whole distance everybody thought it was crazy and it is a crazy thing too because it's also at a certain point it becomes nerve-wracking because you're like i've spent seven hours now eight hours now i hope it turns out it was like it was like dude it's your birthday like why would you want to it's like we'll take you out to dinner and i'm like no no this is what i want to do cool. that's I great smoke first, you know and i did and like i have friends that have since like come to adamson and they you know, I'm like, I don't really remember. It was such a blur because it was 12 hours. By the end of the 12 hours, you're, you don't even want to eat it. You know, you've been smelling that all day. And like, so I didn't really remember it. And they were all like, no, no, it was good. It was like tender. It was like, you know, like it was, it was a good brisket. Because you didn't really, did you really know about, I, I'm sure the videos had it, but do you know about resting and all the proper like wrapping? and? Yeah. So I went, I went unwrapped the whole way and uh, I I wrapped it in, I think I let it rest. And then because it was done about an hour early, I, I like basically covered it in foil loosely, foil. like left it, left it kind of like on the, on the picnic table while I waited for people to, to show up sort of thing. That's perfect. Yeah. That, yeah. That was, uh, that was my first time. And that was the, that was the only one that I, the only brisket I did. Cause other than that, it was a lot of ribs and, uh, pork shoulders, uh, before I walked into Adamson. So when you were scrolling through the Instagram, did they have a job opening? No, no, no. They were, uh, it was like, you know, I think it was a photo of their, their cooker. And I was like, Oh my God, like an offset, you know, uh, like these guys are in Toronto. Like when I get back into town, like I gotta, gotta go try these guys out. And, because I had taken like two weeks off of part-time minimum wage work, like I was dead broke. So I got back into town and I worked like, like overnight shifts and like every spare shift somebody could throw me to just like make my rent. So I didn't, I wasn't actually able to get, like, I think I worked seven days a week when I first got back into town. And then the first day that I had free, I, <laughs> I was so broke that I had to borrow I was like, I want to go try out this barbecue place, but it's like, it's like the real deal, you know. It opens at 11 a.m. and it goes until it sells out, and I, uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm broke, and you know, my wife is like, oh, for God's sake, you know, here you go, you know, here's 20 bucks, you know, go have lunch, and I was like, oh, thanks, and yeah, I, I went out there, and it was a, there was a big lineup, and uh, yeah, at that point, uh, that day. 
they were on the front page of the Toronto Star, like the big kind of national paper. And uh, I went up and I was I was talking to Adam because of course he was the one cutting and you know I was like oh you know where do you get your briskets from and like you know what wood are you using and like you know you're using like you're using the offset cookers like and I he was like oh dude like you know because they were almost sold out they were down to like chopped brisket and like some sausage right and he's like oh I'll get uh, you know I'll give you a tour afterwards. And yeah, they, they sold out probably, you know, 10, 15 minutes after I got my food. And uh, yeah, he came over and he was showing me the cookers and he was just like, oh man, like this has been crazy. Like, you know, at that point he had a, uh, like a catering company and the, the kind of warehouse space, he like built his own like little commissary kitchen out of like, you know, restaurant auctions and stuff like that. Uh, just to, to supply his catering company was kind of like, oh, if we put in like a lunch counter or so, it's like, you know, maybe we can sling some sandwiches and like make some money in between caterings or whatever, right? So he didn't expect it at all to like have lineups at the door. And That's so crazy. He's like, this is, this is wild. Like pretty soon, like he's like, I'm going to need like an overnight cook or something just to do all the prep and everything and, and watch the briskets. And I was just like, like I, I didn't walk in there <laughs> going i'm gonna get a job at this new barbecue place but i was kind of like if there was a restaurant i could work in it would probably be a barbecue place and i just like didn't think about it and just was like i could do that and he was like oh you're looking for a job and i'm like you know what sure sure i am so yeah I, like i started full-time it, to me it was like it was full-time work it was more than minimum wage you know i was like i'll do it for the summer make some barbecue like Maybe I'll like look for a job in my field while I'm working and like, you know, maybe it'll just be like a kind of the summer thing, you know, like I get a summer job and there's a lot of hiring happens kind of September, you know, they kind yeah, of work sure. with like school cycle, right? Yeah. So I, I was kind of like, well, maybe I'll do it for a, a summer and it'll kind of be like a funny story, you know, you might say my kids. <laughs> yeah, I worked at a barbecue <laughs> place. Yeah. I made barbecue for a summer when I, you know, before you were born sort mm -hmm. of thing. But like the more I did it, the more I loved it, and the, like it didn't take long before I like just stopped looking for you know another job and kept making barbecue. <laughs> how, how crazy is that? First off, Adam. Adam's a great guy. Was he the same Adam that we on the, on the interview I did with him? The same excited? He yeah, he seems I mean, like well, a very positive he, force. Exactly, and he, like he said to me, if you had to come in the day before before they were in the paper, it was like, you know, they had lawn chairs that they would sit in waiting for customers to come, right? He was like, I would have said, nah, we're not looking for anybody. And then of course, right after they're in the newspaper, wow. he had like some people going like, oh, you know, you, you guys looking for somebody? So somehow the like universe put me there. That's weird, on that that's day, crazy. You know, when he was like, oh my God, I need like, I need somebody else to work here. It's perfect uh, timing. Yeah. How many briskets were they making at the time? I think we did like eight, eight to 12, kind of depending on the day. If I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, I think it was about that. And how, how did, you, did he give you instruction or did you feel like you knew from what you were doing and you kind of, you guys together winged it or how like in... Yeah, so in early days, like he, he showed me how to trim. It was funny, the first night that I worked there, he... He got a like a gig down at North by Northeast, which is like our South by Southwest. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Uh, That's interesting. <laughs> uh, it's a slinging barbecue down at like the the concert venue that they had, and they were like, "Oh, we're gonna have thousands and thousands of people, so we're gonna need like a ton of food." So we trimmed uh, sixty briskets wow. for that. Was, that was my first night. It was him wow. and I standing, and he like just learning, you know, over and over and over. Like That's perfect for you. Exactly. And so we did that. And then the second night, gosh, I'm trying to think, I think we did like the ribs for it. And then I came back the week after to kind of like start the, the night shift. And it was like probably a couple hours, like seven to about 9pm. And, you know, we went over everything and he was kind of like, all right, I think you got a handle on it. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> wow. At that point, he, you know, he they were putting on the briskets at the beginning of the day, uh, like at 9 a.m., and they would take them off like 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 
and he would sleep on a couch, wake up at, you know, four or 5 a.m., start the rib cook. Like, you know, he was like living in the restaurant Insanity. at that point. So he was just like, this is great. Have at it. <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> well, and, and you Which, showed that you understood what you were doing. Yeah. And so like the first few months, it was a lot of like kind of like back and forth. So what I would do was the first brisket to come off. I would have the, the sheet pan with three briskets in the warmer. And it was literally one, two, three, next rack, four, five, six, like all the way down, all our briskets. And I had a notebook and I would put when they were wrapped, uh, what temperature they were wrapped, uh, what time they came off, what temperature they came off at. And he could go back to the notebook and go like, okay, brisket number six was like super underdone. And he would like go and be like, okay, like it's the same temperature as some other ones that were done, but like. You know, for that one, like you got to, you know, it was maybe like a, a bigger brisket and you had to do it a little further. Like, so it was like that kind of communication was just kind of trial That's smart. That's a really smart way to do it. Yeah. It's because like we wouldn't, we wouldn't see each other a lot. There were, you know, I'd get in at 7 p.m. Like, well, uh, like after he had left and, you know, I'd go home at 3 a.m., 4 a.m. So so yeah, it was like our only way to communicate and I would sleep all day. So I was asleep when they were serving the brisket I cooked. <laughs> wow, that's so crazy. And you weren't even cutting. Were you guys doing beef short ribs at the time? Uh, I think our, I think our first summer we did like pastrami beef ribs on like Saturday only. I can't remember when exactly we adopted them, like kind of as our permanent Saturday special. But yeah, we were doing them at that point. And scratch made sausage too, right? Yeah. Yeah, so they were they were making sausage during the day. That was our first uh, our first uh, morning cook, uh, Matt, who was with Adam when uh, before the restaurant opened. Uh, he since left and he started uh, like a Nashville hot chicken place in uh, West End of Toronto. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. So during the during the day, they would they would make all the sausage from the trim that I would produce at night. Because what I would do was like my ship was basically prepping all the protein for the next morning, the, you know, the ribs and the turkey and then, and cooking the brisket and the pork shoulders. And then, uh, yeah, they would come, Matt would come in at 5 a.m. And uh, he would do all like the, the morning cook. And there was a restaurant that was it the same setup as it is now, or did you guys build, build change the build as you, as time went on? I think uh, every few weeks it changes. <laughs> I think it's, it's undergone about three minor, like renovations at this point. Oh, wow. Like, uh, it, it's a, it's like a, you know, a, a, like a big, one side is a big warehouse and the other side was, was offices. And, uh, at that point it was like the kitchen, the pit room, uh, and then the service counter and then the dining room. And then, uh, the first winter, yeah, the first winter I was there, Christmas break, they uh, knocked down like the the bit of the wall and put moved the fridge, uh, like pushed the fridge in and then put the like rotated everything ninety degrees so people could come in the one set of doors, go past the service counter, and then uh. have more room because at that point it'd be the lineup like went like almost diagonal like in the dining room. So you like had to sacrifice like a you know a, a quarter of the the dining room to just have people come in and so that way it like flowed a lot better. Was it from the get go busy? Yeah, I mean, there were like I don't think we we sold out nearly every day uh, when we first opened. Sometimes you have like you know some sausage left over. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like Saturdays have just always been bonkers. <laughs> like it's always, you know, there was like a first it would be like, you know, 20 people in line, and, you know, and then the next week it's like 25 people in line and 30 people in line. Like you can like chart, uh, Adam has sales charts and like you can literally watch like it just go up and up and up. And we're just like, when, do, when does it end? When, <laughs> when does it become less popular than it was the year before? And like, it doesn't. It just keeps getting like we just keep serving more and more and more people. And that's and that's something like I know that people in Texas when they first start out sometimes they're not as busy then they blow up. But 
Toronto was, there was a, a void for this. This was something, obviously, that people really were interested in. And people probably were traveling to Austin or Texas, but they weren't getting yeah. that at all in, in, in Toronto. And then, and they, and everything kind of makes sense. Like social media was blowing up at the time, like even bigger, Instagram especially. That's, that's amazing. So when, when did you transition to start cutting? Uh, I was a year into doing the night shift. Uh, I had a beard like down to here. I remember that. <laughs> I didn't see this. Yeah, and I was I was like, dude, I'm like I'm I'm going a little nutty here alone in this like warehouse at night. Like, you know, like can I come up to the to the day? Am I <laughs> like maybe I can do the the front half of the the brisket cook? Because at that point, they could kind of do, you know, like. They could kind of do everything at once, and it was getting to the point when you're doing, you know, 20, 25, 30 briskets, but then it was like, you know, I think it makes sense to have somebody at the beginning of it, you know, to just be watching those. For sure. And, and so he was like, okay. He's like, I agree. He's like, but he's like, you know, I want somebody to, he's like, because at that point he was like, you know, doing the expanding and like, wanted to like get a second location. And so he was like, you, if you do meat cutting from, you know, pre-orders, you know, from nine, 10 AM. And then after lunch, which is when the morning cook goes home, you guys trade off and then you uh, do the cook until like the, the new night guy shows up. Then we kind of like have the, the whole day, 24 hours, like covered sort of thing by somebody who's like dedicated yeah. to cooking. So I was like, I, like, not, not like a super outgoing guy. Like, uh, the thought of dealing with that many, you know, like customers was like kind of terrifying. But I think not like sleeping on an opposite schedule from literally everyone I knew. Yeah. Was like, and my want of not having that was like greater than my fear of like having to deal with customers. So I was just like, you know what, I'll do it. Like, I'll I'll try it out and. Like maybe it won't be for me, but like I found that the the better I got at meat cutting, like the more fun you could have because you get kind of more into a flow state and you, you, you kind of have like a lot of the same conversations. So it's not like it, it gets less and less scary the more you did it. So, yeah, especially, yeah, because a lot of people, it, this is a fresh experience for them. So you're having that same, they're like, they, they ask you those same questions over and over again. Yeah, yeah like. I think at the beginning it was a lot of uh, like we had a lot of nerds that were like seeking us out who were like, Oh yeah, I went to a bachelor party down in Austin and we went to this place and that place. Like we have people like that. Of course. We had like, we had like Texas expats, you know, who like we, we had one of our first, like, I don't, what would you put it? Not claim the fame, but like uh, we had a, a woman from San Marco and she hadn't been back to Texas in like 10 years. And she would like, was eating our brisket and just crying. Oh. <laughs> Owned her mom down in Texas and was just like, mama, like you oh. wouldn't believe, like, it's like, I'm right back home, you know, brisk, these brisket oh, and the spare and potato salad, like, and like that lab for us was like better than any like restaurant review or whatever. Mm -hmm. to like oh, it. for sure. So yeah, it was a lot of kind of people like that. A lot of people from the area, but yeah, we never advertised. It was all like word of mouth. So the more and more like it grew, the more people would come in and they'd be like, okay, I know this place is good. My, you know, my friends recommended it, but they don't know anything about barbecue or like really what Texas barbecue is or what central Texas barbecue is, what, central texas craft barbecue is so like a big part of the being the meat cutter was like you know being able to like uh give the, those people that that experience and like you know some people were like you know, <laughs> they'd come in they knew it was good but like you're telling them to eat off butcher paper and they're like what are you talking about <laughs> yeah that, no it doesn't make sense to a lot of people or they they're buying it by the pound like a deli and they're just like what this is a restaurant like you know where's where's the waiters <laughs> sort of thing you know it was a new experience for them so i would say like a big part of the job is was not just uh like cutting things and cutting them correctly it was like you know being able to like to 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 guide people mm -hmm. through yeah to hold their hands is to so to yeah, speak yeah, yeah. And then also just, probably then the reaction after they've tried it and they come back or they walk by and they let you know like how they felt about it. Yeah, you, uh, you'd get 
uh, people that would double back from the dining room, just like, be like, like stop and be like, Oh man, that, like this was great. Or that was great. Or like, you know, you guys are doing a great job or whatever. Like, yeah, that was, it was very, that was a very validating part of it. Wow. You know, Cause it's, it's rare that like you go into a restaurant and the person who's serving you is the same person who made the food is the sure. same person, you know, like, uh, yeah, you see that like maybe in like a like a small niche sandwich shop or a sushi place or something like it's who it has ha- has touched things the whole way. Most of the time, it's yeah, it's, it's multiple people, and people even also that might not even care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so yeah, that was uh, I did I did meat cutting for longer than I did the night shift. Actually, I think it was about a year and a half. But right now, you guys, how many briskets are you guys going through a day? Uh, right now, on the low end, uh, probably. 20 20 something briskets uh saturdays probably closer to 65 uh to like 80 is kind of the the upper upper regions we've got to and sundays which started off slower and are becoming like almost as big as saturday that we're doing you know we might do 45 50 briskets for service on saturday and sunday used to be like you know 26 or 30 and now we're doing like just as many like 40 or wow. you know 48 yeah so like word gets out that we're open on sunday now and the weekends are just are cuckoo <laughs> so, so, so so to avoid the cuckoo-ness what would you recommend someone what day would you recommend someone come and then if they do come on a weekend what time would you recommend someone come actually now we what was it last year we went down to texas and i i like set up where we were going to go and I, I i did like the small craft places i did like the bigger operations like terry blacks and like millers you know and then the like new like the switch to like kind of see like a new place um and it was me and the, the gm and our kitchen manager and adam and uh allison who started it with them we all we all went down and when we saw terry blacks it was kind of like this should be kind of like the new, uh, like we, we went through another renovation when we came back and it was based on like seeing the fact that we could go to Terry Black's and within, you know, 20 minutes be from the outside the doors to like, the that's interesting. State. I didn't think about that. That makes a lot of sense. We, we were like, that should be the new template for the counter. And so we redesigned it to be, it used to be meat cutter sides cat. And we flipped it so it was uh, sides and then two cutting stations with two uh, cashiers and people going up. So we, we uh, based it off of that. So now we can like crush the lineups that used to take, you know, half hour, 45 minutes now, like might take 10, 15 minutes. Oh, that's great. So there's not like a, a secret time you have to come because you, you guys get people through. No. And, and people have learned that like you don't have to slam the doors at 11 a.m. So it's like, it's actually, we like during the weekdays, we'll have kind of like a slower start to the day before it kind of picks up at noon as like everybody gets off for lunch, like in the area sort of thing. So yeah, it's, yeah, I would recommend coming on a Saturday or a Sunday because the dining room is going to be full. It's like a, you know, it's like a party, you know, I, I'd say to, to really get the experience, like go Friday, Saturday, okay. Sunday. That's cool. You know, if you go, if you go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you know, the dining room might be half full, you know, you, there's kind of people on their lunch to get the full experience. You they, need to come on a weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd say come like when we got like the music blast in and like, you know, it's, it's, it's rammed. It's a lot more fun. It's know? a weekend vibe. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what do you have? What's, what's in store for you? What's coming up? Well, basically last year, uh, I had my first kid. Congratulations. Yeah. Living, yeah. Thank you. And living in Toronto, uh, with our, our rent is, I think for a one bedroom, I read the other day, it's something like 22 or $2,300 on average. And I've heard Toronto is one of the most expensive places. Yeah. And also one of the most overvalued apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of like investment property and a lot of like income property, you know, Airbnb and, and, and foreign buyers. And mm-hmm. it's like, it's, it's become a bit of a, a bit of a nightmare of the city and uh i've heard that skylines changed there's a lot of things that have changed yeah tons of condos going up but like a one bedroom condo is you know like six hundred thousand dollars like stupid when i first moved here in 2010 
I remember like a townhouse would be like 400 grand. And I'm like, 400 grand for a townhouse? That's crazy. <laughs> like yeah, that, that same place probably sells for like close to $2 million. <laughs> you know? Crazy. That, and that's like, that doesn't make sense to live. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. It's HGTV. It's all their fault. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I like, we just kind of took a, like a lot of our friends, you know, moved out of the city, moved to smaller towns, you know, went, to other coasts, uh, a contingent of our friends that were from Kingston as well and had moved to Toronto, they kind of started trickling back home and they started having kids and we're like, what are we doing in this city other than working to pay for our rent? And now as of last week, daycare, yeah. uh, it's exceedingly expensive in Toronto, like more than our rent. And we're just like, we're basically working to like, for the privilege of living in a city that we can't really enjoy because we, it costs so much. No, that makes sense. Yeah. You know, we were just like, you know, what do we do? And I was like, look, I think barbecue can make us money. Like, I think we can, you know, carve out a living out of this because there's nothing like it in Kingston. So we were just like, like our, our, uh, like my wife's mom and my mom are, are both there. Like all our friends are there with their kids that are about the same age. So like, you know, if not for the, the job prospects, just for the like support system for sure. oh, yeah. in, in that city, we're just like, let's, that is going to draw us home. So we'll bring barbecue with us. So yeah, it's a huge like leap of faith. Like it's terrifying to think like I have a, a well-paying job here. You know, Adamson isn't going anywhere. Yeah, anytime. Secure, yeah. It's a bit overwhelming, but like Adam's helping me out. He's like, you know, we, we meet every few weeks, you know, we have a sit down about, you know, uh, you know, where are you at? You know, are you advertising here? You making sure you, you know, you have these forms signed, like that sort of thing. Cause he's been through all of this and I'm basically that is kind of awesome. I'm basically following the same kind of formula. Like I don't have like the half million dollars to like bankroll uh, a barbecue joint. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do the same thing, you know, start with a small catering thing. There's uh, right near Kingston, about, you know, 45 minutes, an hour away is this uh, kind of this place called Prince Edward County. And it's right on Lake Ontario and it's like beautiful rolling green hills and farmland and beaches and, uh, so it's a huge summer destination. A lot of destination weddings happen there. So uh, it's funny. My wife and I got married in Prince oh, Edward County. Okay. I'm kind of like, well, like, I think the work is there. We just need to, to make a name for ourselves. And it's called? Matty Boy Barbecue. <laughs> Matty Boy Barbecue. And so how far off, if people are watching this, either now or in the next few months how far off what's kind of the time frame are you looking to early next year or? yeah i'm looking for like summer next year summer next year so that's what okay that's what it was. june july something like that i think it kind of depends on you know finding a place to live and uh like how many things i book before then because like i've launched it now a year early mm -hmm. so that hopefully i can have work like when i go there so could you do caterings and you can't do them now like coming 2020 if people want catering will they be able to start getting it closer to the to that june july time or can they come if if you wanted something in march is that something that you could do right now or is that not part of the equation yeah like absolutely if, if there's something earlier in 2020 and it's like a weekend thing i'd, I'd be able to okay. for sure in terms of like moving there and you know permanently setting up shop like yeah summer 2020 and then what about uh do you have a pit right now or yeah so if you go way way back in adamson's uh timeline you'll see uh like a double 500 gallon trailer mm -hmm. and, uh, that's adam's giving me that pit oh that's cool we have a guy that's like on a work visa or not a work visa but he's from australia uh brent He's our current morning cook, and he's he's going to start his own thing and go back to Australia. But he was a welder in Australia before he came here to work at Adamson. <laughs> Interesting. So I'm, <laughs> I'm like, and we're both like nerds when it comes to like pit design, and like anytime we can find like a photo of like you know the firebox intake or like uh, you know we have like hundreds of photos. Uh, save to those. We're hoping to like make some like mods to it to like insulate cool. the firebox and like try to like improve airflow and stuff so oh that's cool that's kind of like my current project is kind of is modding that and then uh 
And yeah. Well, after this video comes out, of course, then you'll have to probably ramp up everything and move out there in February. No, <laughs> no but at least like it's doing all the things, the social media things, and then hopefully this too. That's why I wanted to talk to you was to kind of get people to think, okay, this is coming up. This is something that they should keep in their back of their minds because like, so now if they, how would, if someone's coming from the States, how would they visit your potential new location? Where would they fly into? So they would fly into either Toronto or Ottawa. Okay. Like Kingston's like smack dab oh, kind of okay. right in the Okay. Like about two and a half, three hours from Toronto, and it's about like an hour forty-five, two hours from Ottawa. So you're kind of like right, right in the middle. <laughs> okay. Where's Where's Thunder Bay? It's kind of a random question. Do you know where that is? That's north. <laughs> That's north. Okay. No, because I my, my, I went cross country when I was nineteen with a friend who his family was from Canada, so we crossed up into Canada a bunch of times to. Uh, to drink legally. And then we also, but we went to Thunder Bay and it was so beautiful. And there's, I think too, I think that if you're watching this and you haven't been to Canada and you live anywhere that's not in Canada, I would recommend visiting it. There's some beautiful, beautiful places. And It's funny because uh, like uh, Queen students, uh, you know, go to the university. They only know Kingston in the winter when it's like, it's right on a lake. It's like, you know, freezing high winds. It's all kind of gray and, but like Kingston in the summer is like beautiful, like green spaces, these old limestone buildings, like, oh. you know, it's like gorgeous. And, and it's funny because Queen students will be like, oh, like Kingston, oh, this, like city sucks. And it's like, you're not <laughs> like when, as I was from Kingston, like you have no idea what you're missing out on. Like the number of tourists that come here just for the city is, is nuts. Oh, that's so, so funny. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Are you excited about this? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, uh, uh, I'm doing like more caterings like with Adamson. Cause I used to just like, it would be, there'd be like Adam would do caterings or we kind of concentrated more on the restaurant and the more kind of staff we have, the more, uh, more caterings we could take on. And so like, I'm going out and doing those just for like practice of doing them, you know, the pack up, the, the setup, you know, those sorts of things. But I'm also, uh, doing pop-ups between now and then like get a bit of seed money going oh that's smart uh, and just like i don't know stretching creatively you know, do some different you know different type of types of barbecue and that sort of thing i want people to be able to check you out so instagram and uh twitter it's maddie boy bbq and uh it's maddie boy bbq.com and then are you on facebook also i have a facebook page <laughs> people still do use Facebook. I don't know. <laughs> I guess a lot of people do. <laughs> it's mostly that my Instagram posts to it, but uh, it's funny. Like I'll look at it and realize that people that didn't like it on Instagram saw it on Facebook. So yeah. <laughs> it's there. Yeah, well, yeah. However, wherever you want to get photos of briskets, <laughs> you'll find it. And it's Matty Boy Barbecue. They just they just do any kind of search and it'll it'll pop up. So so you are going to be going to do little pop ups every so often. Yeah. So at uh, the only day of the week that Adamson's not open is Monday. So I did a couple like Christmas pop-ups uh, the last couple of years on a Sunday. And when we opened on Sunday, I was kind of like, oh, well, nobody's going to come out on a Monday or whatever. But, like lately, I'm kind of like, well, somebody will. Like, you know, oh, why, why am I like not letting me like, why am I not letting myself, you know, do a pop-up just because it's a Monday yeah. night? So going to come out like so. So yeah, like between now and then, I'm hoping to have a few of them. Like a brewery or something? Or? Oh no, like at Adamson. Oh, um, actually, at okay, it'll be a special. Okay, I didn't. Okay, I, I'm, and I'm sorry. Hoping, I'm obviously tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that like when I kind of have a, a, a like a solid you know month that I'm gonna leave the month before, what I want to do is like do a like restaurant takeover and use all like my recipe for you know coleslaw potato salad beans uh you know the ribs like because i I'll, i've kind of been building up all my own lo like little things mm -hmm. in my head of, of my own recipe so i want to kind of like launch it before i kind of head out <laughs> so do a, a restaurant takeover of adamson yeah just like you know on a monday night you know 5 p.m to sold out or whatever just like treat it like a like a like it was my own place that's for cool. a few hours. No, that's really cool. And that's a, that's such great exposure and you're getting all this, the like people. And also too, I would love to, in maybe six months or as we get closer to that date, do another, a follow-up, 
maybe 10, 15, 20 yep. minutes. That way, get, get people more of an idea of, of what you, what's happening because it's still kind of not up in, up in the air, loca- the specific location wise, what you're, the hours, the days. So I think that would be great to give people an update if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Like Prince Edward County and Kingston have like, you know, yeah, my bread and butter hopefully is like doing weddings and stuff. But uh, they've got like dozens of breweries and wineries and societies and uh, like I'm hoping that between, uh, you know, between doing uh, specific caterings that I can do pop ups at breweries and kind of like bounce around, you know, keep getting my name out there. So hopefully, hopefully in a few months time, I'll kind of like have an idea of, you know, what places, when and where that uh, people can follow me around (laughs) until it. At least until I have a, a permanent location, which you know I think is is further away, but uh, that's the goal, you know. Well, that's and the, and people that's what people do these days. They do pop ups, they do that, and then they and that and they, and then it becomes more frequent, and then then you have your permanent location, and who knows? Maybe you won't have it. Maybe you'll just who knows? It, the life the pop up lifestyle doing it for three or four years would be like mentally tough unless you're unless you're a caterer. That's what you do. It's pretty exciting. It's it's going to really be a happy local. for you. It's like going to be a whole new uh, experience. Uh, and I like, you know, Adamson just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And like, uh, like at a certain point, it's like I wanted to like just kind of hone in and like do my own thing, you know. And so, yeah, it was kind of like this is the opportunity to do it. So and you've got the got- bless- the blessing of Adam, too, which is awesome. And this is really cool. Yeah. I'm really happy for you. And I'm glad you took the time and you're you're going to work today, right? Uh, no, I work Wednesday to Saturday, oh. long, long shifts, but only four days a week. So, okay. I mean, I'm pretty much on call <laughs> with all the barbecue related well, questions. Obviously we're going to get calls during this interview. So <laughs> fridge inventory issues and all those things. So, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's cool. Well, say hi to Adam for me and thank you for taking the time. And oh gosh, this is great. I'm really excited. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Excellent.